In this video, we are going to talk about how to establish a two-way SSL handshake using a Spring Boot client server web application. If you haven't watched my previous videos explaining how to generate the certificates that we will be using in this video, I will leave the links in the description box below for your reference. This video is going to assume that you have a minimal experience or exposure towards Spring Boot projects. Without any further ado, let's get started. This is what we are going to do from the browser. We are going to invoke the HTTP client and the HTTP client is going to call the HTTP server and see if uh, the connection is successful using just HTTP and the client is going to use native web client to call the HTTP server. Then what we will do is we will, you know, enable the HTTPS on the server and then we will try to call the client from the web browser like from the web browser i will call the client which will be running on http and it will call in turn call the server which will be running on https right so that's one way ssl and then we will probably configure the ssl on both sides so that we will still make the call to the client using http from the browser and in turn the client would use HTTPS to call the server, but we will enable auth in here so that it will verify the trust from the client. So this is what we are going to do now. So I already have the base code for the server and the client. If you see here, this is the server code wherein we have the controller with the path server. So this is just going to throw back a string called secure data when I hit the endpoint. Let's take a look at the code that it's configured to. Right now it's configured to 8072 and it's not going to run on HTTPS. It's just going to be served on HTTP. So let's go ahead and start the server. Let's go to the now if we see here like now we got the response now let's check see if uh, we could uh, call the same thing from the client uh, let me go into the client code uh, i'm gonna add a controller so it looks like it's already added so i'm just gonna add a get method within it i'm gonna add this method so to add this like right now we are we do not have the web client dependency so we are gonna add it so i'm gonna go in here and add the web client dependency And this is available right now if you look at here uh, right now we are going to call the 8072 that we called from the browser right so it's going to take the server path let's try to call client which is running on 8071 slash client slash http and see uh, if it is making the actual http web client call let's go to the browser so we need to navigate to local host 8071 slash client slash http before that we need to run isn't it let's check if uh, the client is running okay the client is running on http at uh, i071 so now when we go in here so probably i have typed a uh, missed helen here so now if you see here the secure data is coming from the server and this means that like we have successfully established a http connection meaning um, we are able to call the client which in turn calls to the server so the next step is to add a one-way ssl right so we will go ahead and uh, add the configuration from the server side which is we would need to add the ssl property this is the required property to make the server secure so let's go ahead and restart the server and see if, uh, if it's running on HTTP. Yes. I'll leave the port to 8072. So this is where we would need to add the certs that we created in the previous video. Uh, I will go ahead and copy paste the cert that we created in the previous video. I need the server's key store. So I'm going to add it in here. Right. Okay, let me try to start it now and see if it starts. So if you see here, like right now it's running on HTTPS, right? Let's go ahead and change localhost. So we need to do it on HTTPS. Right now, see, it's uh, showing as if it's running on HTTPS. Okay, so now if you try to do the same from the client, it should not work. It should throw 500 internal server error well it, it's throwing 500 internal server error because uh, the trust store is not configured in the client 
how it's worked is because like you know we clicked on proceed so that's an exception right so we clicked on it so it let us uh, even though if the certificate from the server is untrusted so that's the br browser functionality that is still allowing us to access it so now we have to add the trust to the client to check see if we are able to access the server so this is just the one way SSL so to do that I will create a configuration package so I will add a, a file called SSL config so this file is going to have a configuration wherein we would import the trust store which would be injected into the SSL context that we will be using to make an APA call okay so if you see here like I have copied uh, the code code for uh, injecting the trust store but I still see uh, the class not found because uh, I haven't imported the package uh, we would need uh, a package from Nitty to you know establish the SSL context in here so we'll go ahead and uh, add it to the dependency so we're going to the client uh, gradle and then i'm going to add this package so it's done so if i go back in here it's it's all gone since i copied i forgot to set the package name so which i will set right now okay now uh, so what happens here is we have created our own web client bean and uh, if you see here uh, we are trying to uh, add the reactor which is the http client from here and uh, that's actually coming from the ssl provider and the ssl provider we are trying to call this method which is going to inject the trust jks file for us the this is the same file that we created in the previous video. If you haven't watched the previous video, I will leave the link in the description box below on how we got this JKS in the first place. So now we need to uh, add it to the resources. Since I have it wired uh, through at value, I will need to add the properties. Go ahead and add those properties in here. So now I had added this properties. Now it's the time to input the client trust store. I'm gonna copy it into the search file. Now we have added the client trust store in here. So let's go back to the SSL config. So this is gonna get injected in here. So the password for it is password, right? So that's what we set it, set it in the previous video. So now uh, this is gonna read this file and it's gonna load the key store into the SSL context. So the SSL context is then injected into the SSL provider, which is uh, which is then injected into the connector here. So we are gonna instead of like you know if, uh, we we go back to the controller, we have used uh, the one web client, right? So instead of uh, using this, we will try to use a bean. So we'll add one more method. So if you see here like i have copied this method what we are doing is like we are using this web client as a bean and it is configured as a bean in here uh, so this is going to provide this bean so we will be using that bean in here and then get uri and we are going to make a https call this time to 8072 and slash server and the bean within it is going to have uh, sorry the bean within it is going to inject the trust store and it's gonna help us authenticate why don't we do it in here itself just to make sure okay let, let's do it here so that we can you know see the difference you know in a new tab right so let me go ahead and uh, start the client and see if it starts first it threw an exception and uh, i'm checking why it's, it's throwing an exception Let's try to debug and see what happens in here. Okay, I think uh, it's just because of the path being incorrect. Let's go to the configuration in here. Let me check see if uh, 
okay this is incorrect this should be its path let me apply and see if uh, this fixes the problem yep it fixed the problem okay let let me let it go okay now now if you see here it's still running on http but we have created one more uh, git mapping with uh, the path https for us to verify in a new tab right let's go ahead and hit this endpoint which will eventually throw h uh, internal server error 500 let's open it in a new tab with https it's still throwing 500 well let's go and see what where it's throwing because we because it says the web client is null well i i think i missed the autowired keyword so it's wired right now so it, it 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 brought me back so if i go back and hit here i it still should see internal 500 internal server error now we have successfully made an api call from the client to the server using one way ssl next we will see how to configure the two way ssl to configure the two-way SSL, we need to make changes to both client and the server. Firstly, we would make the changes from the server side, meaning MSSL server, and then we will take a look at the client side changes, right? Uh, let me stop both of it since I'm going to do changes in both of these uh, applications. We need to add the configuration for the trust store and uh, we have to add one more property like client auth is required, right? The property that tells the Spring Boot to check if the client has the right certificates we'll go ahead and add it so this is the server trust store which uh, which in this case has the ca cert and uh, we have configured it as like auth needed there are other values that it can take like want it would work even if uh, if there is no trust on the other side but for this case when it is set to need it will for sure validate if the trust is uh, uh, trust and the right key certificate is available only then it will allow to access the server so now we need to add the server trust store that we created in the previous video we'll go ahead and add the trust store in here now the server side configuration is complete let's uh, take care of the client side configuration with respect to the client side configuration we need to make few changes to the ssl context since we will have to inject the key store file in here i'm gonna put these values into the property file so that i could read from there this is to read the key store file from the location and this is for the key manager factory so now if you see here like we are using the password and the key store so it's just matter of adding this property in here so now we have added this property and if you see here we have this uh, client key store which we need to add it to the cert which we will do it right now now if we start the server So now when the server start, we shouldn't be able to access it from the browser because the browser does not have the client auth. So it should throw an error if we try to access this endpoint. Earlier, if if we remember, uh, it was allowing us with an exception. Right now, it, sh it shouldn't even allow with an exception. So here is uh, the server that's running on 8072 and it's still on HTTPS. So let's try to access the server right now. So it's on HTTP. So if you see here, it's asking us to change to HTTPS. So even if we change it to HTTPS, it shouldn't work. So if you see here, it says uh, the client's auth is bad, right? Because we did not have in the browser, we do not have the required key store and the trust store right so that's the reason it's throwing an error it's not allowing us to make an api call from the browser so it's secured so now let's uh, start the client if you still see here the uh, the client is still running on http 
because uh, as we mentioned the two way ssl that we are going to talk about is only between these two and not between these two so it's still running on http and the mutual authentication only happens between these parties it's a bad certificate what did i miss this time oh well i missed a line of code in here that says key manager and i will have to import it isn't it so since it did not find okay now let me try restarting the client application the error was because it says bad certificate the reason being i forgot to uh, wire the key manager in here so let's see if it works or if it's gonna throw any other error okay now it worked uh let let's go back and check if this endpoint works or not so if you see here this still throws an error this works and uh, the direct api call from the browser to the server is still throwing us bad at right so now we have successfully established two way authentication right the next step is how would we check see if uh, the common name that we used to create the jks file is correct or not we will use the filter for it that's what we are going to see next so i'm going to add a new package for this so i will just call this config in the server and i'm going to copy a new file in here so i would call this as an authentic authentication filter so what this is having is it has a filter and it has another method that splits the the ldap name that we created so let's see uh, how the name is going to look like using the key explorer let me pull in the client key store so if we check here so this is what it should show when when the certificate loads and in here we can write our own logic to add one more layer wherein we can throw back to the user say it's for on unauthorized or or like whatever right so now let me since i added this let me st start the server in this line we should see that the name that we saw in here is printed or not right that's what we are going to check right now so it started let's go here and uh, hit this in this endpoint which is a client endpoint if you see here like the client is still running on http so we can make that as http as well if you want right so now if you go scroll here the subject is what we were looking for and if you see here the issuer is the certificate authority this is what we named while creating the key store and the trust store right the final filter chain is not uh, a mandatory thing it's nice to have we can add uh, spring security to make it better i will leave the link for the code in the description box below hope that you were able to follow along despite the hiccups that i had during the time of making the video thanks for watching that's it for the video